William Carey. If uh, ever there was an unlikely hero in Christendom, it was William Carey, an impoverished shoemaker from England whose passion for world evangelization was not shared by the Church of England at the time. But he didn't let that stop him. He eventually made his way to Malta, and even though he had no support or encouragement, eventually finding his way to India, he was known as the father of modern-day missions to those of us who were around at the time of Christ's return. Jesus did an interesting thing with William. He got up from his throne, and he came down, and he faced him towards the crowd, and he said, if you're here today at the Bema, because of the influence of this man, either directly or indirectly, because of the great missions movement, please stand. And all over the stadium, over a billion people stood. People with different color faces and spoke different languages, and William was overwhelmed. Jesus went to him and picked him up, and he said, Ah, ah, William, well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Be glorified. And he was glorified. And he returned back to his seat. And the angel announced another name. Angela Moser. An interesting thing happened when Angela's name was announced. I heard a commotion up above, and I thought to myself, well, that's interesting. I wonder what that's all about. So I thought to Uriel, I said, Uriel, what, what, what's going on up there? And he goes, ah, oh, it's Angela's turn. I'm like, well, wh wh why? What's so big about Angela? I mean, is she a big person? He said, ah, oh, in heaven, she's a big person. She's so well known to us all. We're so excited. And I said, well, why? What did she build? What did she make? What did she lead? What did she give? And Oh, none of that stuff. She was a behind-the-scenes hero in heaven. I saw Angela's life play out before my eyes. She had remained single by choice to care for her invalid sister and her aging mother. She would taken care of people in the church who were less fortunate than her, serving behind the scenes. But what she was really well known for in heaven was her prayers. Ah, this woman prayed. She prayed for her church. She prayed for the ministry of her church. She prayed for the lost in her area of influence. She prayed for her pastor. She prayed with the sick. She prayed without ceasing. And they made such a big deal of it at the Bema. Jesus literally leapt off his throne and ran down to her and threw his arms around her and said, Ah, oh, Angela, I'm so proud of you. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Be glorified. Oh, and she was glorified and she was radiant and full of joy. And I thought to myself, wow, prayer really does matter. I, I should have listened to Pastor Mark. I mean, he talked about it. He told us that if I could go back, if, if I could do it again, I would pray more because at the Bema Seat of Christ, prayer makes all the difference in heaven. The angel came to the front of the platform again. Joseph Ray Robinson. Joseph was born during the Depression in the South. Not a great place to be for an African-American gentleman. He wasn't allowed to go to school. As a result, he had to work bit jobs to care for his eight kids. He drove limo. He shined shoes. He delivered papers. He was a uh, security guard in a high-rise office uh, complex. <laughs> it's, it's Joe. I chose a security card. I didn't recognize him at first. I saw his life played before my eyes, and I was humbled. He didn't become embittered at the school district's refusal to let him go to school, but rather he taught himself to read by reading the New Testament. 
In fact, he had memorized over three-fourths of the New Testament. He understood that the Bible, God's Word, was a double-edged sword. And so, as a result, he would tell everyone he came in contact with a Bible verse. <laughs> I, I wasn't the only one. Jesus turned Joe towards the crowd and said, If you're here tonight at the Bema because of his influence, please stand. As I looked around the crowd, I recognized over a hundred people from my office complex. <laughs> and I thought, this guy who annoyed me this morning, I wonder, am I worthy to even shine his shoes here in heaven? And Jesus said, ah, Joe, well done, my good and faithful servant. Be glorified. Oh, and he was changed, and he returned to his seat, radiant. And the angel pounded again. Juanita Perez. Uh, my cleaning lady. I saw Juanita's life played out before me. She had been deserted by her husband, left with three small kids, and she had raised them on her own. She had to work two jobs to care for them, one during the day and one at night. Her kids had grown up to love and trust Jesus, mainly because of her prayers. <laughs> she was a woman of prayer, too. The Lord allowed me to see how much she had prayed for my kids. And then he showed me the impact that her prayers had had on my kids' lives. And it came to me that she had a greater impact on my own kids than I did. I was humbled. This woman who I wouldn't even look in the eyes this morning, I wondered, am I, I want to spend a thousand years with tonight in heaven. And she said, ah, oh, Juanita, well done, my good and faithful servant. Be glorified. And she went back to her seat, leaping and dancing and praising God. And everyone in her whole section was so excited. And I looked around the stadium. I could see that it was uh, three-fourths lit up. And I thought, well... My turn's got to be coming soon. And sure enough, after a couple hundred thousand more names, <laughs> the angel came to the front of the platform. Daniel Scott Matthewson. Well, this, uh, this story is a little too long to tell in one setting. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's just going to have to come back. <clears throat> uh, next week, we'll see played out before us the uh, Bema Seat Judgment of Daniel Scott Matthewson. I want you to be prepared. Uh, you may see yourself there. Uh, here's how you can prepare your heart biblically this week. I want you to take time to read the following passages. It will give you a theological grounding for uh, the Bema Seat. Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3. Uh, Romans 14. And Matthew 5, 6, and 7. They're going to leave this slide up so you can write them down as I talk. But in those texts you will see Paul describing the Bema Seat of Christ, and you will also see Jesus' teachings on rewards and, and what kind of things we're going to be rewarded for at the Bema Seat. And it will prepare your heart to what God might have to say next week through the drama.